this U-turn in life, right? Um, from my school days, in you know, in an Indian context, if you are good at sports and if you are good in studies, your school life is awesome, right? This is probably your happiest school life, and that was mine, right? When I was a I was uh, good at sports. I was uh, I got my dad's gene in uh, the sporting gene, and I was good at sports naturally. Uh, I was playing cricket for my school. I was captain my school. I ran for the state, and many other things. And all the while, only to go back to studies in the evening, right? I still remember my 11th standard uh, half yearly exam. The day before, we had. Uh, we had this uh, district level sports meet and uh, I was training for all of that. Just a week before the exam, I got to know that the sports meet was, before, was just the day before the exam, right? Like a typical Indian, right? On the day of, on the, on the morning, I called up my uh, PT sir, I told him I won't be able to come because I have fever. Because I have, next, I have, a, I have an exam next day. And I was really, really scared to do something that I really liked doing. Sports was my love. I mean, I really, really enjoyed playing sports, but ran away from it. Ran away from it because I had to go back and study. Nobody forced me to study, but there was always this pressure to go back to books, right? But I was also good at it. Um, I got a chance to go to Bits Pilani. Um, you know, I heard about uh, Bits through an alumni. So we had, uh, our principal was fantastic, our school principal, and he organized a uh, lot of guest lectures even back in school. And surprisingly, I sat, I mean, I was awake during that guest lecture, and uh, I, um, I was very inspired to go, go to the school, and uh, um, ended up going there, right? So it was a very, very happy childhood, and very uh, smooth in, in that sense, right? And then my first disaster, right? I met with an accident about two weeks before going to college. I remember waking up in the ICU and I was, when I met the doctors, I was just, the only thing I was telling them was I want to go to, I, I want, I, let me go to college, right? Get me out of the hospital now, I want to go to college. I kept telling them maybe three, four days later and after a week, I was out of ICU, I was back. Um, within a couple of weeks, I was in college, still trying to recover from the accident. And the first year was a disaster. It was like this pretty blank. First couple of years in college, actually. I didn't do anything in college, right? Back, that, that was, the, uh, you know, back in the days where there was no Facebook, right? Even without Facebook, I wasn't doing anything, which means I was a total loser, right? Not doing any, um, I wasn't having any fun at all. Not that I watched movies, didn't do anything, didn't do great in studies, very average, didn't play any sport at all. I thought I lost the ability to play any sport. First two years was very, very average. Didn't do anything. I was pretty, you know, lost in fear. I was, I thought I was not able, not going to do anything at all, anything useful. I didn't have any dreams. Very, very average college life, right? And then one day I started playing again. Uh, I was back at home for a short vacation. I started playing again. And I started playing more sports when I went to college. And I remember in college, I was, on many days, I was the, probably one of the few guys in the, on the sports field. At 5 a.m., um, you know, the sports field is opened and we were one of the few guys who would go there every day, not even miss a single day. We'll actually go curse those guys to, uh, when they close on uh, Sundays. I think they close it on Sundays and we would curse those guys for closing it. We're the only guys to go there every day. And I slowly started liking different things. And now I was no longer not too scared about doing things that I like because I pretty much have sort of screwed up most other things. So I wanted to start doing things that I like doing. So for a lot of classes, I would not even attend, I would, even if I was wide awake, I would not even attend classes because we didn't have mandatory attendance at all, right? But thanks to that, that um, policy, I also could go to classes which I liked doing. End of college, I wanted to become an uh, entrepreneur. My dad is an entrepreneur, and uh, uh, I wanted to be an entrepreneur like him, right? And uh, I thought the first step to be that was to learn how businesses need to run, right? It's such a very, very bad idea. 
Um, I thought I'll go become a consultant before I launch my own company because then I will learn how businesses are run and I will learn how, um, you know, where opportunities are and start a company there, right? Now looking back, that was such a bad idea, but I did that. I joined a consulting company for a couple of years thinking I learned what, what are the different opportunities out there. But that is not the way companies are started, right? I will later on tell you how companies get started, right? But here, so I decided I'll join this company. So I worked for a year and a half, and uh, I started to feel that I was really not moving anywhere, right? I was not moving anywhere towards my goal of starting a company, nor did I actually enjoy my work, nor did I actually find out something interesting to do, right? And me and my friends started discussing about starting a company, and uh, we discussed anywhere from um, you know, uh, rural marketing idea to you know, whole bunch agri marketing idea to whole bunch of other things, and eventually, after six seven months of discussion, nothing really happened. Uh, you know, wild uh, uh, you know decision making uh, uh, effort. We just both of us just quit. We didn't have a great idea, but we just quit, and we thought we'll find an idea in the next two th two to three months, right? Really rash thinking back, uh, but we just did that. And for a couple of weeks, I was, uh, for a week I was at home, I'm from Coimbatore, I was at home. Within a week I realized if I stay there, I will not have many more ideas to start a company on. So I came back to Chennai. And, uh, and I used to go to colleges on weekends, Saturdays, to talk to students about entrepreneurship. And, um, and, share, and share ideas on how they can start a company, not in the rash way that I did, but uh, in a more methodical way, right? I don't know if there is a methodical way that is though, but uh, <coughs> um, yeah. So during the process, um, I met a lot of students, and again, it, it seemed like many, many students were very interested in doing something interesting. They, they were very keen. People who used to come for these uh, sessions they were very keen to do something, but always didn't have the ideas or the avenues to do something. They lacked that exposure, or they didn't they didn't have the right guidance, right? And uh, we came back, um, and uh, I was discussing this with my team, and we were brainstorming. And we, at that time, we realized that you know there were several networks, right? You had you have LinkedIn for professional network, there are job sites, but there's nothing for college students to start off, right? And Facebook wasn't the platform that students getting, you know, where uh, Facebook is not the platform for students to get ex opportunities or exposure, pretty much uh, taking away the, the, you know, it's more of a time sucker. So we were looking at different uh, platforms. We were looking at an idea of creating a platform for students to get uh, interesting opportunities to go meet people and uh, learn from them, right, through internships. And around the same time, you know, a lot of these statistics get thrown at you all the time that students are not employable and all of, all of that, right? So, anyway, we didn't, we were really look, brainstorming ideas to see how more students can get more interesting opportunities. So, with that, we came up with this idea of 2019. Um, <clears throat> this is an internship platform where students can get internships from companies, right? So, and of all the things that we have done in 2019, the, the most easiest thing was to actually have the website up and running, right? We got this up and running about two, three months, and uh, that's when all the challenges started. Now, <clears throat> we thought if we build a portal, more people, people would just flock and come and use it, right? Nobody did. And we used to go to different colleges, hang around in the canteens, tell students about opportunities, you'll get great exposure, you'll get stipend. Most students were hooked, they really liked it. They came and used it, but none of the companies were convinced. So <clears throat> initially, the companies would come and post their internships, they would not get great, uh, you know, they would not get connect. In fact, many of them didn't even believe that interns could do something interesting in their uh, company. That was the biggest challenge that we faced in 2010 when we launched. None of the companies would believe that at all, right? And more and, and as we approached more and more companies, they were convincing us that this was a very bad idea, right? 
<coughs> and this was, uh, and the only thing that saved us at that point of time was our connect with companies. By then, I was I was in uh, Chennai for about three four years. By then, I knew a lot of uh, small startups. So. My friends started using the platform first, right? And we used to go to events and conferences and tell people, come and recruit, because most startups were struggling to get uh, people to work for them. So all the startups were the initial ones who came and registered, on the, registered at the portal, right? Still, we weren't big at all. I mean, not even big. We were just about getting like 300, 400 people visiting our site every day. It's just a you know, it's a massive, massive uh, disaster right at the start. So we had to do something there, right there. So <clears throat> initially, and then we realized one major flaw in our portal, which is, or with any other job platform, right? Um, when a company comes and posts an opportunity, all the students, they just go apply. Meaning, we saw one student randomly applying to about 50 companies, not even looking at what sort of opportunity uh, was available. They just saw stipend, they just said, OK, go apply. And when the company looked at all the um, information of uh, the students who have applied, they were not able to filter at all. They had thousands of people who have applied. right? They just could not go filter. So the first thing that we did was um, create this uh, um, quiz challenge tool. So we removed resume on our site. We completely removed resume. We didn't want anybody to apply with a resume because anybody can apply, anybody can create their own resume and, and uh, they can just copy it from their friends. There's no, it was not a tool for some company to evaluate a student. So we created a, a, a quiz challenge tool, which is every time a student has, uh, uh, you know, when a student comes to apply, they have to answer questions. So they could be tech questions, it could be marketing uh, case studies. So and so on. So that completely helped us in eliminating a lot of uh, irrelevant people applying. So many times now, only students who are very interested in the role and very relevant to the role apply, and companies are very, very happy. You could see that from the numbers, right? 2010, we hardly had any company using our portal. And then we launched that in 2011. We had everybody using you know, more and more companies uh, registering on 2019. So now we have over 4,500 companies at the last count using 2019 as of now. Some of the companies are using 2019. And some of the student impact, right? We keep hearing a lot of stories. Almost every day, we get close to about 10, 15 emails from students thanking us for creating this platform, right? And the next U-turn, I would say, not a U-turn, I would say the next positive turn here was um, we, re we realized that of all the students who, who are applying to internships, only 30% or less were getting shortlisted. The rest of them didn't have relevant skills to get shortlisted. So we thought we'd have a courses section where students can learn. So it was very wrongly misconceptualized uh, in the sense we straight away started working with uh, all the training institutes across the country, we realized that the biggest problem with training institutes was no student knows which training institute to go rely on, right? There are many institutes, but nobody knows which one is good. So we thought we'll go rate all the training institutes and have them on the website. We started rating them, and we used to go, the methods that we used where we used to go outside uh, training institutes, ask students for feedback, and ask them to rate it. And everyone started giving great ratings for every other institute. And we just did not have a model at all. And we were not progressing anywhere. And soon we realized that many of the training institutes themselves were closing down because they did not find great uh, uh, teaching faculty at these institutes. So we scrapped that model. We went back to the drawing board again, and we started an online courses section. Now we partnered with really, really good experts who started creating content for us. And we launched online courses early this year. And we even have professors from many colleges using our site, giving us great feedback. That was one professor from West Bengal who's taken up courses. So we've been getting really, really good student uh, uh, feedback so far, right? So essentially what we've done is we've got students to not just create resumes. In fact, on our website, there is still, we don't have any resume on our website at all. We still want students to do real work and showcase that to companies, right? 
through our quiz challenge section, we encourage students to go create profiles and all that, uh, portfolios, and then show that to companies. We want students to do real work. So in the last two and a half years, we have over 40,000 students who have been shortlisted for internships. That number could be a lot more. And over 80 crores offered a stipend on the portal. right? And some of the awards that we got last year, uh, Tai Chennai gave uh, the Young Achiever of the award, Year Award for the work done by 2019. And, most in, and this is more interesting for me because Bits called, us, called me back and gave me you know, 30 under 30 award for one of the um, top alumni uh, who who's, who's doing good work under the age of 30. And this is more interesting, especially because of my early days at Bits where I was not really doing much at college. And, and I found a real purpose in life. Me and my team have now a real purpose in life we really want to make sure that none of that happens, just want to kill that top portion and want to help students live their dream career with practical exposure and skills, right? We now have a real purpose and a real meaning in life. Now, we, we are, now this is our purpose, going after it really strong, right? And for you guys to live a very happy life, you got to find a problem, right? You got to find a problem. And how do you find those problems? Through U-turns and experiments. You will go through many, many U-turns. You will have to experiment. Keep experimenting till you find a problem to solve, right? Till you find a problem to solve, keep experimenting. And then keep on experimenting to solve that problem, right? And U-turn is all about that. U-turn is all about trying to find a problem. And once you find a problem, you got to solve it. And you can t take many, many, any number of U-turns. But progress, right? The progress is about trying to find a purpose, trying to find a problem, and solving that problem. And for me, over the last five years, I've experimented in several different areas. Of course, I spend more than 90, 95% of my time at work. But I've just not had, I've just not had taken a single day off. If I look back, maybe last five to eight years, I've just not had taken a single day off, right? Right after my, from the time I quit my uh, full-time job, started up. So 2019 is where I spend more than 90, 95% of my time. So Deepam is something that a bunch of us started and we've taught over 1,000 children in the last five years. And I've run a few marathons was part of the ultimate frisbee team in Chennai. We won the nationals in 2010. You know, play cricket in the weekend cycle. So some of these weekend stuff, but you know, you can continue to experiment till you find the problem that you like doing, and you will you will be consumed by this problem, right? That is life. You will have a lot of fun. Good luck.